Yeah, let's go hook the coil back up. I refueled it. The white wire. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? I refueled it. Fire it up. Different plug in it. Let's see if that skip goes away. Bad plug. Now it's on all four. It's smooth too. Nice and steady. Watch the gas. That's how much gas it uses. Alright. Awesome. Out of gas now. Yeah, there it goes. You hear the idle come up. I mean, it's running lean at the last couple seconds. Nice, we got it. Purrs like a kitten. All right, all right. Hey guys, and how's it going? Hey, we're going to continue working on this uh, 1970 Amante GT kit car. The body's a 70, the chassis is a 65 Carmen Ghia. And then you know, pick a year, what you want to call it. Anyway, so we have two videos on it already. The first one was kind of going, getting it and taking the locked up engine out of it. Found that that engine was uh, pretty broached out, but it came with another one. So the second video is putting two of those engines together, putting it back in the car, being able to get it to run. So that's where that is. It's, it's up to the point where you can go into it with a key, fire it up. It doesn't have any fuel. You know, the, the gas tank's all corroded. No uh, throttle is hooked up to it. There's tins that need to be addressed in the back. But you can start it with a key when you fill the uh, gas line up with fuel. So that's where it's left off. We have much more work to do. So we are going to uh, hopefully carry the torch a little further in this one. Uh, I think I want to start with, well, one of the biggest issues is I don't fit in it. That's a slight issue, right? <laughs> uh, off camera. It didn't have any keys for the doors and the ignition, so that has been taken care of in the door. The door has been, uh, all the cards and stuff have been replaced back on it. But here's where the issue is. The dimensions of me in there, I kind of smash into the steering wheel and then down to the pedals. So there's really not enough room for me to fit in there. A couple things you can kind of do. One, possibly get a smaller steering wheel and or kick that seat back further. I'm, I'm kind of opting for kicking the seat back and see how that works out for us. And at the same token, there is some corrosion underneath that carpet down on the floor there. So I, I think it's gonna be our direction. We'll start with that and see where it goes. We have to get in there and kind of free up pedals. And I think I wanna heat that clutch one up and bend it over. So all this stuff has to come out of there before it goes poof in the big flame. So, all right, let's get set up. See if we can get that out of there and start doing some wrenching. Going to the driver's side. And this is where it's a little crunchy. You can literally stick your finger up inside to push the carpet up. So I know this area is kind of blown out. I think these are the four bolts for the seats. Seat. And I think back two are for the seat belt. What do you think the chances are that those are studs coming out of the seat and they're not going to spin when I go to turn them? Well, I'm gonna go, just cause of all the rest that's on, I'm gonna go hit him with a wire wheel, give it a fighting chance. Wish me luck. Ha, it's one anyway. A two. See if that'll wiggle right out of there. Come to me. They're fiberglass buckets. I think they're out of a 914 also. Just different covering on coverings on them. Any money? 
No? You got that, whatever that is. What do you think that did? <laughs> it's got a separate, I think that's choke right there, but it's an automatic choke. It doesn't have a manual one anyway. Might've had on a different engine, who knows? All right, we got a couple of seat belts. Probably should have grabbed them while we're under there, huh? Let me go clean this out of here. Let's see if we can get this carpet right up and out. It's like it's got old, uh, hey, I found a, uh, what is that? That's a directional switch. It's one of them. Old house uh, carpet underlaying it, but it's, I think I'm getting a little on the petrified side. <laughs> All right, and get the seatbelt brackets out of there. Probably have to go put vice grips on them to keep them from spinning. And we'll yank all this out. Do I have to get this out too? Oh, we'll get from underneath it. Nope. It's just right up to it. Good. I ended up taking this piece of trim off. It did have part of the carpet captured. Okay, let's see what it does now. It smells like the 70s. Yeah, look at all that in the front. Look at all that crap. Yeah. Hopefully it will come up. Hmm. Not looking great, is it? Dig all this crap out of here. This is where I really expect it to be nasty. As well, all the water puddles, and then you know, especially stuff like this, it just holds it there. A lot of times, there's a brake line that runs across the back here. And that brake line will rot out up by the pedal cluster because water sits there too. So we may end up getting into that. But I can get all this out of here and get a shot back, back me up, bring you back, see what it looks like. She's cleaned up a bit. I got that out of the way. And the back kind of expected it, you know. Saw that from underneath, but as I'm looking up front, I don't think you can see the light down below. You can see it all through there. It's punky. Holes there holes there so it's almost the whole thing I think this is Carmagia floor Carmagia is wider than a beetle by about four inches I think I have a patch panel I don't know if it's for that side or that side I'm gonna go grab it we'll lay it in here it, again it's for a beetle we'll see what that looks like if we could possibly use it for some of it if not we might end up making some of our own let's see how this goes and there it is hiding back there I already tell that is going to be way too small. I mean, we could fold down that edge. We have to. That's for a battery. A lot of times it might be the other side also. Not that it's going to matter for us on this. So if we tuck it right into that corner. What do we have for corrosion over there that we've got to fix? Yeah, it's right up to the edge. It's right past it. No, I think I'm going to go. We'll get the rest of it out of there. We'll take a look at the other side. Maybe we'll do a little shopping online. See what's available and what's going to take to get to us. Yeah, it's money and time. Sometimes, you know, stuff takes a couple of weeks to get to you too and I kind of want to keep moving. Let's get that out of there. Get the carpet out of the center. Get the shifter off. The e-brake maybe we get that rear section out of there it's all got to come out anyway because we can't weld with this crap in here this stuff will go up like a, a greasy rag and the mess on the passenger side did not find any money or any other VW type of contraband from the 70s looks like they hacked into the tunnel what is up with that? Oh, you know what they probably did? They probably moved it. They must have moved the emergency brake. 
Man, yeah, they cut the whole tunnel section right out of it. Move the, the uh, shifter location more than likely and the emergency brake location. So I think, I think that's the regular seat bolt right there. And they are back mm, 15 inches on the seat location. Yeah, I'll go get all this cleaned out. I probably have to take that console out to get the carpet out. Probably could slip it out from underneath there. Got some crusty, ready, crusty, rusty screws. Let's see if that'll does that move. Yeah. We might be able to slip that carpet right out from underneath there. I'm gonna unbolt the shifter. This has two bolts. In the center of it, we'll get that out of our way and see if we can slip that carpet right out. I kind of want to inspect a little bit of that too. This is that back deck. More of the same. Hopefully the metal's good underneath here though. This is with a actually that's that's probably last kit car right there. Yeah, it's all the fiberglass of the car. What a mess. Alright, well, we're gonna go do some more digging, get all this crap out of here. I don't know if we're gonna get all this carpet out of here. We just essentially want to concentrate on the floor, but I do want to get this crap out and you know replace it with something else that's not like crackers. Well that was a literally a pain in the ass. My old carcass up in there. They riveted the carpet on in all the places. All those spots are where rivets are. And usually, you know, if it was screws, you could take the screws out. And rivets, generally, you would drill them out to get them out. But when you're trying to drill with carpet, it catches the carpet and spins it around. So I ended up just kind of like ripping right around where the carpet pieces were. Oh well. As far as the floor is concerned, passenger side is in, in better shape. It's got some blowouts. In it could definitely be patched. The front's not too bad. I think this is the only section right here in the front on the uh, passenger side. Driver's side definitely has more issues on it. So I'm going to go do some shopping. We're either going to make them or make patches, or we'll try to get if they if they make. Sometimes they make like half panels because the other part is shipping too. They'll, they'll nail you if you try to get a full pan all the way from there all the way to the front it's oversized shipping so it'll cost you a hundred bucks a piece just in that part of it not even including the price of it so I don't want to get like you know you start spending five six hundred dollars just in pans I don't want to put ten fifteen thousand dollars into a five thousand dollar car <laughs> probably best way to put it right so we're gonna see what we can do around that plus I, I kind of want to continue to um, hone in my metal fabricating skills, work on, I don't even call it. So, we'll see, I'm gonna go do a little bit of shopping, see what's available. All right, so it's the next night. Uh, yesterday, I was able to locate floors for it, uh, sections, which comes in four different pieces. The two rears and the passenger, the front was not available, it is on back order. So we can still chase the other three, possibly make the one that is missing by using the one that's going to be for here it's pretty much the same thing flipped over just the the bumps go the other direction so possibly we could make that might even make more than that we'll see what we get when that comes in and again that should only be a day or two but let's continue on and get see get to see more what it means i know the gas tank is really nasty you've got to come out and get cleaned and or replaced so we get that off uh, i think the master cylinder is underneath there we're going to check to see what the condition of that is and then pull a couple of wheels off, see what the brake uh, wheel sonars and shoes and all that kind of stuff look like too and get that stuff on order so we can start getting all the, the bits together. Not sure if we have to unbolt those, whether they're a vent or not. Let's get the gas gauge part off. I think what they did is they took a, a Beetle gas tank, spun it around the opposite direction and then took the filler neck which is right below you, you can't see. And it looks like it's cut down and it, they re-welded it so it would fit under the hood. Oof. 
sticking the screws out, it stinks. And you see the, even the crap on the screws alone. I don't think this is a, a terribly expensive fuel tank. But it all adds up, right? Try to save what we can. There's only one bolt. I don't see any bolts down here around the front. The only thing I see is one right there. Let's see if we can get that out of there if there's any, we get any movement out of the tank. Probably gotta flip it up to get the gas line out from underneath it. Bolt on it, had vice grips underneath. Is this anything? Yeah, I'd say so. Safety first, huh? <laughs> One bolt. We should have a gas line down under it. into the tunnel. Then a little splitter, it looks like it goes off forward, probably to the heater. Let me get that up. I'm gonna get a little screwdriver on that um, fuel line there and get that that off. Looks like it should be enough play to lift it up though. I'm gonna work on that a little bit. A little bit more wiggling. Let's see what these guys are getting pinched in what they're doing. Braised onto the tank, so right there, they're braised to the tank. They're not. It's not like we can unbolt them and they're going to do anything. They're still attached to the tank part of it. They like maybe things that have come forward and up and out, maybe. Had two lines going on it. This is the regular where regularly would come out. Only one of those lines was connected. Yeah, one was the one fuel line, and there was nothing on the other one, which must be a vent, I would guess then going to it. See some kind of line plugged off here. There's a master cylinder and then this is the line going down the tunnel which goes down the inside of the car and pops out in the back. I see another line there. I wish that's what it popped off. That's probably the one that was on the other side of it which was just capped off. Oh, stinks. The car, not me. All right, well, that's it. One bolt holds it on. <laughs> One bolt through the fiberglass on an angle. We'll call it good in the factory. Let's go. I'm probably gonna go put some water in there. I'll let that smush around a little bit and get the, the initial crap out of it. Maybe apple cider vinegar. Prizes come out of here. Oh yeah. That is from literally when I was in the eighth grade. That's how long it's been there. 
And it's about the same shape as I am too. <laughs> Ooh, that smells so good. Doesn't even resemble gas. Our rust came out of it too. I got that sitting on a drain pan and then I'm gonna go rinse it with some water we'll take a better look at what we got but let's get her up on I don't know maybe one side or the one of the axles to we'll start getting the tires off of it and take a peek what we got for brakes this puppy works wrong way this whole thing an animal 12 volt youtuber sent it to me Fortunately, they're the steel ones. They make a like a, a cast aluminum one too. Those are kind of nasty. We get that dust cover cap off. We get the wheel bearing apart and we get the front drum off. Normally, that center right there would run on a beetle. That's a speedometer cable. And this one does not have one in it. So I don't know if this thing ever had a speedometer in it at all. There's no cable here at all. Nope. Not it. It's got a folded over clip that locks two jam nuts together, or two nuts together, to make a jam nut. Get one side out of the way. Hopefully, you get one set of pliers. Damn it. They shouldn't be very tight. And just enough play on the bearing. So that's a hair. Capacity to rock, just a hair. Some people also will take the, the thrust washer back here and they'll put a screwdriver behind it. And they'll just feel for a little bit of drag on that thrust washer. That's the preload on, on those bearings. Shit just slip right off of there. You get a rubber mallet and tap on the center while I'm pulling it off. I think uh, the inner seal is probably just holding. Definitely the inner. happened on the back side is a bearing just like that but there's a rubber seal going around it well the bearing is stuck onto the shaft so it kind of wants to leave the bearing behind but the seal is holding it so I got to get some pressure on it to get it to pop apart from there the bearing really shouldn't be stuck on there but who knows could have spun just might have crap on it normally it just pulls right off just needs a gentle tug that's all bet it left the seal behind. Nope, it pulled it off. So what do we got for brakes? I 
gonna go pop them off and see if those cylinders even turn. I moved you over to the other side. Get the shoes off of it. What happened was the inner race stayed behind and it's not supposed to do that. I'll show you in a second. Right here. That's supposed to go with the bearing and pull off. That's what was holding it up. I knew I had too much resistance. We may be able to get that off of there and reassemble it. So far it hasn't done any damage. Depends on where you can get that off with an air gun without scoring the surface, you know. First to see if these will turn. No, they're locked up solid. So this is the wheel cylinder and what happens is hydraulic fluid, the master cylinder, when you push the master cylinder, inside here, there's machine surface with a spring in the middle, a hole in the center where the fluid comes in, two cups that are like rubber, and then two metal caps, which are these on the outside. See if we can get one of them out. And you can kind of generally tell the condition of a wheel cylinder by when you pull the boots up. If you pull them up, you see a bunch of fluid, it's automatic junk. Sometimes you can save them. There's that piece that's solid and then that has a rubber cylinder that pushes on it. And you can look and you see a bunch of uh, pitting and all on the inside. It doesn't look pitted, but it does look like it has a lot of corrosion growing on them. They are not terribly expensive. It's not something that, uh, you know, unless it's really hard to find, you really would not change. You might as well uh, show you the rest of it, right? See if you can knock it out of there. These are supposed to be floating. I didn't exactly call that floating. That's probably going to go piss some brake fluid out too when we when I punch that center out. If it'll come out. <clears throat> Let me go get a, a rod or something to drive it out. I just go pop the guts out of that. Yeah, it's supposed to be floating in there. <laughs> I launched the rest of it, but essentially it has that with a spring and a cap on the other side of it. Yeah, so that's the parts that are in it right there, along with the two metal plungers on the outside. But that part of it. Is the whole setup and fluid goes in the middle pushes out on those two those push on the uh, metal parts and the metal parts push on the shoes but if you look down in that wheel cylinder see if maybe light from underneath is that too much see how crappy and corroded they are now you could hone them and they, they sell like little rebuild kits but you know they're like under 20 bucks a piece and probably the rebuild kits will cost you 10 a piece as it is so we're gonna pull one of the back wheels off but we pretty much know what we need i What's more important to me is actually see if I can get a part number off of these because I don't quite know what it's off of. My guess is going to be 65 Carmen Ghia, but again, it's a mix and match of parts. The same with the master cylinder. In 65, they had a single master cylinder that is a dual master cylinder, so I had to go find one of those that kind of match what we got. Actually, it is a single, isn't it? If all the brake lines are in the front, yeah, that is a single. Check out the uh, compression fitting. Like at six o'clock, five o'clock. That's a compression fitting on the line. That's that's a no-no. <laughs> not supposed to put those on brake lines. It could be flared on each end. I'm not sure, but uh, it looks like a compression fitting to me. And for the back, we just got one big nut in the center. I think I might be getting a little overzealous with this guy. <laughs> Let's see if he'll take it off though. It did. It's supposed to be torqued down pretty good too. But this should be able to slide right off the splines. There we go. And 
emergency brake looks like. Somebody pulled the emergency brake cable. This right here can get you a light go. You guys can't see anything, can you? Come on. It's on a VW. This arm should be back. This is the emergency brake arm. You pull the cable up front. It's already uh, shrunk down and the, the emergency brake is all the way down. So what happens is you have to adjust these brake, brakes manually. And then uh, as the shoes wear, your pedal gets lower and lower and lower. You gotta readjust the brakes. Well, what happens is the emergency brake is taller and taller and taller too. So if you don't adjust the brakes and instead you adjust the bolts on the emergency brake, the studs on the emergency brake pull more cable it creates this problem and then your brake pedal is always low because every time that you have to go hit the brakes, even if you go to adjust them afterwards, the emergency brake has already taken up some of the slack so your adjusters are off and you have a big space up on this wheel cylinder, which is right now, you can see how that shoe is not touching. Either side, I was able to, to wiggle it back and forth. I had two hands, I can show you. See how that's moving? And it's not moving the cylinders. The cylinders are all the way in, but the shoes are floating over that. So every time you hit the brake pedal, the very first pump that you're doing is just taking the gap up just to go out and touch the shoes and then you hit it again. Now it's actually pushing the shoes. So that's a, a big problem with uh, the old manual adjusting brakes on VWs where you can't get a good brake pedal. People think it's the massive cylinder. Not always, sometimes it's just that. Somebody adjusted the emergency brake with the, with the rear brake adjustment out of whack. Should be able to get all them off as one assembly too. That's a funky looking clip. That's not normal VW, that's looks like JC Whitney VW. Should be able to get both of those off. Just get it out of the top and then get the emergency brake cable off. That one, that one. Get the cable out of there. Because what happens with that is the emergency brake pushes on this bar. So the more you push on that bar, the more the shoes separate. The more the shoes separate, the larger that gap gets up top that I was just talking about. So that's why it has to be back all the way so these are in, touching the wheel cylinder. Disc brakes don't have that problem because the disc brake, it auto automatically goes to the, uh, you know, if it, the caliper closes to a certain distance. It doesn't have to back way off every time. It just stays right there next to the pads and pushes, you know, each time just a hair more and just relaxes. Where a brake shoe, a brake shoe relaxes the whole distance, whatever the gap is between the shoe and the drum. All right, what do you want to do? Let's see if we can get that out of there. First, we're going to see if they turn. That one sees. Same problem. Yeah, but again, this car hasn't been used since I was in the eighth grade. <laughs> Everything in it. Gonna need it. You can't even move those. And they're supposed to be floating in there. That one moves a little. So that's good. I'm gonna go inspect the brake lines, see how they look on the car. The solid lines I'm talking about in the back. There's flex lines in the front. I'm gonna look at those and make myself a shopping list. Get a quick look at the drums. I should be able to cut them. They're not down metal to metal. They got a little bit of rust on them. I do have a, a brake lathe machine. They actually do not look bad though. They got a little bit of crap on them, but they're fairly smooth. This is what the front ones look like. And there's a lot of rust, but I don't, I don't see any heavy grooving heavy grooves in them, they just need to be cleaned up. That's where it's been parked for a long period of time and the, the moisture gets in on them. So measurement, you measure across, you get, can only cut down to a certain amount and it'll be stamped in the drum what the dimension is, usually it's stamped in the drum, be like 10 inches, 10.00 or 1020, like 20 thou over, somewhere on it, it says it. And let's go shopping. This car, I believe I had gotten some wheel cylinders or something for it at one time. They were the wrong size. This is a 68. But let's go see that. I think those are flex lines also. And yeah, we still have to order other ones, but it's nice to try to be able to use up what you got, right? 
They look a little small, don't they? We'll bring one of those over. Actually, they might be the rear. Your uh, front brakes do most of your brake work, so they're usually larger. Hard to say. Let's go. Now the same diameter. Overall length. Now see how this one's all squished out? You can squeeze them in. Those might be it. The gap here is wider. And sometimes they are asymmetrical. The caps on the end will not be a straight cut. They'll have one side that dips lower. You know, they actually they look straight, but sometimes they'll be on an angle. Maybe the, uh, are the old ones. Now they're pretty straight too. Just that what I'm looking at. I don't know if it's going to affect it or not, but just the gap on the end of those are ones this one's fatter than that one the other is the offset that goes the bolt on there are they going to set because there's a two inch i think one and seven five or and in a two inch two different widths of brake shoes so the offset of this is about a half inch difference yeah i think it's actually pretty close all right so i got a pair of the rears let's go shopping for some other stuff how about the flex lines? They look a tad long. I think they'll work. Actually, you know what it is, because that has to go in that holder that much. And that one has to go in the holder that much. Yeah. Okay, they look like they're good too. These lines look like they're decent. Going up and around. Those are back in there so there's a union right here where the line comes from the back from the front of the car to the back and splits over to the two axles I and mean, you actually want everything to be fairly good in this car because if you have a single circuit uh, you lose one wheel you lose all your brakes where what's called a dual circuit you'll have a rear circuit and a front circuit if one of them fails the other one still works so you can put a dual in it and I may do just that it's a miscellaneous Great parts, it looks like. What's that? It's a boots, drums, shoes. That looks like a new set right there. Scoping them downstairs. Is it front and rear? It might be front and rear. Yeah. I think there's a full set. Actually, there's a pedal cluster too here. That's what we got. Because you might, we might not like that gas pedal that's on there, so we keep that in memory. Here's a, here's a single master cylinder, but that looks like it's uh, into a VW. I don't know what that's to. Well, I'm going to keep digging if I find anything else that's uh, good for us. <laughs> I'll bring you back on. So those are a set. I'm not quite sure. They do not look like VW. They might be for something else. And then it has two just shoes. And I was thinking maybe that's part of this backing plate set because they all look like they're new. That looks like a new wheel cylinder. Possibly that might be the same as the front one. We'll take a peek, see if I have another one of those. Over in this little VW hoard, these are some parts that were taken. Came with another car. So I think these are the other shoes that were over there that we were missing the other set to. One of those, maybe those are those. Easy man, no. They keep coming. You just sand the outside edges, they'll be fine. And that's only if we uh, can't get new ones within an easy period of time. That looks like it was new takeoff. That one, not so much. 
you know what it is just to break fluid pissed out of the let's see if they still squeeze yeah now we're gonna go bring these down too. see if they can work for the front ones those are too short we are gonna need still new flex lines for the front what else we got while we're here to put in our memory bags in the future when we say I need one of those and I say I remember right that gave me play This should be all type 2 bus stuff. This came with a bus that's downstairs. Yeah, so all that stuff's gonna be, be too big if we find it in there. So it looks like we got front shoes, rear hardware kit, uh, brake lines, rear wheel cylinders, rear wheel cylinders and lines. The other wheel cylinders that we brought down are too big for the front. The other shoes are for a later model. They are the larger setup. I'll show you what I'm talking about as far as um, the wheel cylinders are have a different offset because the shoe, see how much bigger that one is than the other? No, that's drastic, but uh, you know, there's, there's a couple of sizes in between. So the dimension between here and where it rubs on the wall changes. So the uh, dimension of where that wheel cylinder sits does the same too. You know, the later they get, the larger the brakes get. But uh, you got baby ones on this. Good thing it's a light car, right? All right, so I need rear shoes, front seals, front flex lines or rubber lines, and front wheel cylinders. Anything else I'm forgetting? Ah. We also want to grab a set of um, motor mounts. And a trans mount. Probably gonna get, uh, we'll get two sets. So I have some here for, because they're all, all the VW stuff's pretty much the same. All right, my shopping list. Well, yeah, tires. I might have a set of tires that'll work on this. We'll save them for another car, but at some point they're gonna, just gonna go to dust. So, tires. I got some uh, new old stock at the house that might work. Another page, apple cider vinegar for the tank. We're gonna go try that. Well, I definitely see she looks worse than when we started. <laughs> That's just part of it though. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I had more parts to start reassembling, putting stuff together on a video instead of just taking the car apart but that's the way it rolls. I gotta go chase parts and get that stuff in. I do have somewhere a set of mirrors, fender mount mirrors that are nice for there. I gotta go find them. Yeah, tires, the tires I have are like the one bias pie that came off the rear. And I, I like the way those looked. These look ridiculous. They're just too tiny for the wheel well. Well, let's go see if we can go get some tires. Unfortunately, they are out back. And uh, not exactly easy walking. So we're going to go take a little fruit wheel drive. As long as my battery's good enough. It was three degrees last night. I am waiting for that to start glowing. battery I don't think. <sighs> Try it one more time.
back here, hidden away, along with my my very first tractor. I bought 26 years ago. A little Gilson hydrostatic drive. I think is a tank. And someday we are going to make a very nice video of bringing that one back to life. But not today. Let's get those tires. And they are some very old. Critters living in them. What size are they? Firestone. I thought they were red walls. Maybe red walls that are so, uh, you yeah, know, they're red walls. Just so dirty, you can't see them. Go load them up in the bucket. We'll bring them to the shop. That should work. So I took up some time and mounted a wheel. One of those tires on the wheel, rather. And I like the way it fills up the, the wheel well. It's, the suspension is up, so it will drop, but the problem is it does touch there. And if you go all the way, <laughs> that, that might be an issue. So the suspension that's underneath there pivots back as it travels. So, as the suspension comes down, it, it, the tire does move backwards, but unfortunately, I think it's just such a large diameter tire. What was on there was F's before, and what I have on there now is a G. And on the F, when I put them next to each other, this corner is a little bit more rolled off, where the G, it's more squared off. And, you know, of course, that's what's hitting. You see what I mean by how squared off the corner is, and it, it rubs on the back of the headlight bucket, the lower headlight bucket. Can I adjust it, maybe get in there? Can I trim the front fender? I can. I don't know if I want to go through that. On the back, there shouldn't be any problem. We can go swap that around over to the other side, and again, when the, when the car's down and that gap goes away on top, it'll really fill the wheel well out nice. And in my mind, I keep having the, you know, the Mach 5 in my mind, and for some reason those wheels kind of come to mind with, other than the fact that it needs the uh, the three-spoked spinner in the middle. I think that seems kind of like what they look like. The other tire that was on, that uh, tiny tire, was just ugly. It's this, you know? That just looks goofy. <laughs> Sorry, it just, it's not it. And, and the problem with all the modern tires, that's how they are. They're, they don't have a, a tall profile, most of them. You know, this dimension is fairly small and they have a wide tire. It's hard to try to get the opposite like the old tires were, where they were more squared off. So, I do have one other option. On the 56 I got from Jason, he has these on it. And I really don't want to put these on this car. This is too early of a car to have those old style. It's, a, it's an oval rag top. And they just don't quite match it. So maybe we'll go grab one of those, pop it on there, take a look, see how it fills it up, and make me maybe make a decision from there. Hey, anyway, I got us a little bit better light. Still, eh, I don't know, the, the rim isn't terrible, but the space around it, I'm just not a big fan of. So I think I have to try to come up with something in between. The back one's not in all the way, but yeah, I guess the idea of difference. I don't know if they even, I would think they probably still sell bias ply tires. Yeah, you know, the other thing is they ride like crap too. When they're cold, they get a flat spot in them. Shake your teeth for the first five, 10 minutes of riding around. I do have somewhere right here is the set of four, which are like 205s with a white wall. I guess out of four of those, they were for the Econoline. If I wasn't gonna do the mag wheels on that. Maybe we'll take some time. I'll go clean up another wheel. We'll get that one off of there. We'll put that tire on there. We'll stick that on the front, see how it looks. And I, I do like those wheels. Just the tires, about an inch too big. <laughs> Joke there somewhere. Well, I definitely say that's better. And it looks like we have enough clearance around the front. Just the aesthetics of it. I, I just still kind of like the 
thin red line with the squared off tread on it. Just, it looks more vintage is probably the best way to put it compared to the modern style tire of that. But nothing says any of this is etched in stone, right? I could always kind of keep looking. But what I may do for now is just put these four that I have on these rims and we'll call it good and we'll just keep an eye out for swap meets and stuff. Something crosses my eye or if I even see a, you know, a set of those bias plies. I think this is what was originally on the car was this size, which was the F's on there. So if I could find an F or would it be an E underneath that, maybe just a little bit smaller, give it a little bit more room or S for the rear and E's for the front to give a, a little bit of play. Anything's better than those little tires that were on it. They were just not doing it for me. I could probably paint those white walls too, huh? I painted them red or not that they're bad with the body. I also kind of like the way the wheels, the offset with out the wheel adapters. I tried putting a regular Sealy back on it and that tire was sucked way in. It just really looked goofy. I kind of like the alignment of that. So you ended up dumping out the old gas. Just an update. I <laughs> throw it in the well. It's all in the same video. So I, I dumped out the gas that I had in there and it took some crap out of the bottom but not a ton. So I switched over to lacquer thinner and lacquer thinner really seems to be doing a number on it. Let's see if we can get it to pitch. Hold on, this might work better. So if you get that stuff to go flow over there, you can literally see that. Sure you can. <laughs> there you go. You can see that the stuff is really dissolving it. it looks it's looking really good too so i'm gonna let that sit overnight and the tank is not really that rusty there's not much rust in it we'll see afterwards maybe we can, we'll hit it with a little bit of acid but it definitely looks like it's breaking up that good half inch of sludge that was sitting in the bottom of it it's been i'd say 24 hours the lacquer there has been in here it really hasn't moved around much every once in a while i come over and splash it but let's see what we got i would say it definitely did a lot better than straight gasoline did. I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna put some fresh stuff in it. I'll let that go through. Let's go get a little uh, light and look inside. Going in. Oh yeah, big difference. Still have some sludge back in those back sections. You know what it might do? I'm gonna go throw some more in it. I think I'm just gonna set this in the back of my truck. I thought about putting some hardware in there to rattle it around, but I'm not shaking it that much. In a truck, it's not, you know, tied to a wheel and let it kind of splash around. What I'm afraid of, one of these pickups goes down on an angle and you also have the sending unit for the, the gas tank. I don't want to beat that stuff up and, and fatigue that in and break it off inside there from having literally hardware hitting it all the time. So, so I'm kind of going away from that. Oh, yeah. The sludge just settled right out of it. I think we'll get it. Well, 15 years ago, you can tell by the, the dust on the box, I bought some mirrors for another project that never got used. And I already put one on the car. Forgot to grab the camera. But I'll show you what I got. These little bullet ones. And they're going to go sit up on the front fender where the crappy ones Originally where they're all mess. I am so glad there is rubber below the uh, mat. <laughs> is that for a blooper? I guess that spring is supposed to be hooked onto that tab. That tab is broke off. Well, what happens you don't take stuff out of the package for <laughs> 15 years. Here's a little nipple that's supposed to hook onto that. And that was some ice falling off the roof. Anyway, I'm gonna go try fixing that. We'll go put it on the car and see what it looks like. <laughs> There's rubber mats right below us and I put them there just in case. And uh, just in case paid off, I guess. So it looks like what they did, they slid a clip on and then put the glass on first. What do you think our chances are? We could do that. 
Oh, breaking the glass. Oof. I'll put that out of harm's way. Because that's got a lot of spring pressure on it. Hmm. So I guess I have to go get that hooked on the inside after I re-drill a hole. Pull this assembly up through here and lock it on, then re-glue the lens on the front. Wish me luck. And I need to drill a hole down into that. Into that tab. I wonder if that's glued in. Yeah, I don't think we have any other option but trying to maybe drill it right where it is, but it's on a funky angle. I don't know if we can get a center punch on there because it's just a diving board, right? Well, don't know you try. So deep in my stash, there's this long set of drill bits and I was always wondered if I would ever use them. And I guess today's the day. What size do you want to go for? Let's see. The spring is that diameter, so we want something a hair bigger than that, I guess. It can be a little smaller than that because the more we take off, the less meat is going to be left. Maybe that one. So I go even smaller. We could always go up from there, right? Let's try it. I think it's going to walk on me, though. Sometimes run it in reverse. Oh. Why did it do that? Like I say, you can't really center punch it though because, I don't know, I'm going to try getting a big piece of heavy metal under here to support it and try hitting it with a punch. Yeah, I know, I should have done it the first time. Let's see if we can get a dent right there. I need three hands. Something to hold that weight down. If I have to, I can probably go much lower and just get a longer spring. I'm going to have to get a longer spring, I think, anyway. Let's just go for it, see what we get. It is so flexible too. You can favor it. It's gonna fall out. about center too. Mm. Too much light. It's in the middle. Yeah. Focusing ain't focusing. There you go. Now we just gotta be able to get it hooked together. That's gonna be the fun part. So I need to be able to get that hooked into there. 
I got something wrong. I got it backwards. <laughs> I'll say that's too easy. I don't know if I can come up behind it with a set of needle nose. I'm gonna take a wire wheel, clean all this crap off of here. Maybe we can get behind it with a pair of needle nose or some kind of tool as a fork, get it fed up into there. I got this. And it's gonna go like that. Hmm. I think it's something you got to come up through the hole with, though, to grab, you know? Can't be under it, because that's going to take up too much room. Got to be able to grab it. Hmm. What's your thoughts on that one? What would you do if you were me? It looks like if you cock it on a really strong angle. You're fairly close. Let's go. Hold on. Let's go try. Kind of like when you're a kid and you took the Rubik's cube apart and you cocked it on an angle, you're able to get it. Slippery. I think we might be able to get it like that. Maybe we just kind of grab it with a pair of a needle nose, very thin needle nose. Maybe we can get it up and over and kick it in. <laughs> I foresee that going like, doing that a couple thousand times. I wonder if I can grind a little, a couple little flats on that maybe too. Going fishing. It's like a dexterity. I don't think these vice grips have a good enough bite to them. Vice grips, needle nose. Yeah. I think I might take it and grind little flats on there so I don't slip off the edge. It'll probably still slip straight up, but yeah. you need a pair. I need something a little bit better than these. It's another pair. I know you guys want to see the money shot as much as I do, but I might have to change the camera. So I need to be where you guys are looking. I need something with a little bit of hook on it. These might be too big. Let's go see what happens. Right in the eye. You know what I think happened? I think the aluminum is so corroded down below, it just broke away again. Ah, oh, that's what it is. It's just whatever this metal, pot metal, is made out of. That's why I failed in the first place. It's just gotten brittle over the years. I almost had it too. I was there. <laughs> so I drove another hole further down, but we are definitely going to need a longer spring. I found that one so far, but the the pull of it. Isn't going to be that strong. 
So this is my plethora of a spring stash. Let's go see what we can find in here. Worse, if I don't find anything, I will use that one that we got. I'll try winging it with that. You know I'm going to dump them out to go find what I need. Well, I'm going to go cut that other one down. I didn't find anything better. If not, we'll cut that one down. We're going to try stretching this one out first. Got a little. I might have overdone it. <laughs> Let's go see what happens. So close it is. I think I might have overstretched that one though. Yeah, if I get it with my fingers. Come on, get in there. It might be okay. As long as it's got enough tension to hold it where it needs to be. All right, I'm not going to complain. We're going to go call that for a win. <laughs> let's go get it on the car. I'll glue the lens on later when it's on the car, just in case. But uh, let's go get the car it mounted on the car. I think we'll go with a little bit of black cheese whiz. How's that? It's the right stuff. It's like gasket maker, but it remains flexible. It was kind of squish that down onto there. Kind of like recent headlights, we'll put a little bit of tape. I don't want that set up. Ah, I'd call that a save. Well, guys, it's getting late in the evening, so I'm going to go wrap this one up. We'll call it to an end right here. Floors came in. I don't know if I showed that already, but uh, three of the four, I got to make one. This is the passenger side, the driver side needs, which is unfortunately the worst one, but they didn't have it. Uh, we have to make one, the inverse image of that. We'll see how that goes. As far as the car is concerned, I took some time and used uh, dish soap, a Scotch-Brite and whatnot. Kind of went around, just got all the grime out of the car that was on it. It was really filthy. I don't know if it, it shows up all that much. I, I did the headlight, one headlight bucket I did not do to give you an example. So that's what it used to look like. That's what the rest of the car looks like now. Hood pins are in, mirrors are done. I'm probably about another four or five days out yet from all the brake hardware and tune-up parts coming in that I ordered. Cut the brake drums while I was waiting. They are done front and rear. Tires are mounted, got those on. The two in the front are good. The two in the back, the rims are kind of iffy. One's bent, this one's bent when I had it on the uh, wheel balancer. It's got a bit of a wobble to it. So that one's iffy and that's the one that was really rusty. I tried cleaning it up, but yeah, there's just no chrome left on it. So it definitely looks like crap. So I'm going to keep an eye out during the summertime, the uh, swap meets, and see if I can find another set that's yeah, similar to that. That same style wheel it doesn't have to be the same exact, you know, width or offset, but those are Chevy four and three quarter lug pattern, 14 inch. I think they're seven inch wide, six or seven. So I find something within that. I'll put the fatter of the two on the back, but for now, we're just going to run what's run what we've rung. 
It's looking pretty good though. All the glass in the car is, I don't know if I said it, is uh, AMC Marlin is what they are out of that big back window, the side windows and the windshield. I also grabbed in my stash, I gotten these at a yard sale a couple years ago. These are Corvette hubcaps, not sure what year they are. But they got spinners on them, they come off with a screw. I may try making those go fit on the center caps from those rims. I did order new center caps, so they'll be here at some point too. There's only one screw holding them. Depending on how that flange lines up to it and whether it looks good or not, we may try adapting and putting them on there. Some of you guys are calling me sacrilege right now. I'm taking these apart. I don't know if they're valuable or not, but I probably paid 20 bucks for them, 10, 20 bucks for them at a yard sale. I think that's it. Oh, the gas tank. The gas tank I threw in the back of my truck with the, uh, uh, what am I using? Not thinner. Uh, I forget. I'll add it down below. Anyway, so that's uh, sloshing around the back of my truck as I drive around. That's kind of cleaning up uh, fairly well. Lacquer thinner has it in it. Uh, and threw some hardware in there too. So we can kind of turn up the bottom. I think that tank will come back fine for us to go use. And we still have to make the tins for around the back of the engine. Try to work on the cooling part of that engine so it doesn't cook itself again. That's another project on its own. That's it. I think the next one is going to be... Uh, Get into the floors, getting that done. And then all the metal work will be done. It's really not that far. I shouldn't say that because it's how you jinx yourself, <laughs> jinx yourself. It's really not that far be from being on the road. It's still a dead middle of winter right now, but uh, it's really not that far. I don't feel from getting back together. It's not like we're doing a bunch of body work and paint at this time. So it's just getting brakes, fuel system together. Fix the floors, put the interior back in it, drive it. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys with that i'm gonna go sign off and thank you all for kind of hanging out with me have a little bit of fun doing some wrenching and uh playing <laughs> playing in the garage with that guys i'll uh see you soon till then later bye